welcome back everyone so today we are going to be creating a blade runner effect inside of maya now this was actually a request by somebody in the comment section who mentioned how to create a blade runner effect inside of maya using Unreal. so now there are a couple of ways how we can do this and i'll be showing all the ways that you can achieve this effect and some simpler ways so let's get into it now the first and uh, one of the easiest is obviously using the ai fog and using that fog giving a a bit of a tinty orange color to create that kind of foggy look so let's see now this is a basic setup that i have here i have a simple character here and a simple plane i've also applied a terrain texture on top of this from my terrain collection and uh, this is a simple character in a pose so we can have a cinematic look and a simple camera that's it so no lighting whatsoever so if i show you my scene uh, with a simple sky dome light let me just turn on this and take a sky dome light all right so there we go so now since i'm using the gpu version of arnold the texture if you have a bit of a heavy texture it will take some time to load in it will show you a pretty black scene don't worry about it it will load soon so anyways so this is my basic setup this is my basic scene so let's get started so i'm gonna pause this quickly and go to my render settings and here as you can see in the system i have i'm using the gpu version of arnold you can also use cpu if you have a good gpu you can use the GPU. Now GPU does have some limitations on some certain nodes but I don't think for this uh, particular type of design it's going to be an issue. So in the end I've kept the samples to around 5. I think that should be enough. We can always crank this up when we are doing the final rendering but I think for the visualizing purpose 5 is enough. I'm going to get into the environment. Here you can see the atmosphere and in the atmosphere we get two options. I've already made, uh, actually created a video about explaining both of these uh, effects where you can create AI atmosphere volume and AI fog so you can check that out if you want I'm going to create an AI fog here and let's start this up all right so as you can see we have something like this now I'm going to quickly actually switch over to the perspective yes and I'm going to show you let's get into the AI fog settings and I'm going to go to my attributes so here we have the AI fog settings all the parameters that we need now if i go to my perspective view here and if i show you the overall scene you'll notice that the fog is on the wrong axis now this is a z axis which is completely wrong instead what you want is on the y axis since the fog should go not like this but instead like this right so this should be a bit more darker part and this should be much uh, lighter part so this is what uh, we are trying to create here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get into the overall ai fog here settings and instead of one now you can see we have ground normals uh, now this is x y and z and in the z direction you will see we have the value of one so instead of on the z axis we'll make one on the y and zero on the z axis so now we have a perfect fog lineup now one thing to keep in mind is since uh, the fog is generated from the horizon we do have to adjust our horizon fog um, depending on our scene so here as you can see we get a perfect result but i think we do have to tweak just a little bit so i'm going to get into the perspective shape again perspective camera to sh explain you how exactly we are going to fix that so what i'm going to do is simply now this is the ground point this means basically shifting your fog in a certain direction so if i make something like a negative 10 maybe now you'll notice that the fog is getting below the horizon so if i go to my main camera now this was the zero and this is minus 10 sorry minus 10 there you go so this is what you have so i'm gonna keep it pretty low here actually let's make it minus 100 so it's pretty low now i believe yeah so why do we need so such a low fog and the reason is because not exactly that much low you can keep it to somewhere like maybe 50 that should work uh, because we want to create that feathery look that we get from the fog so this is your fog in the y direction and this will be the darker part and as it goes upper and higher it will get much lighter so this will be the darker so we are trying to create that feathery look for the whole fog here so i'm going to go to the focus ai fog here uh, not this one we want this one and i'm going to increase the height to something like maybe a 10. let's keep increasing this all right so i think this should look pretty nice 60 is good enough for me and 
Now since we have solved one problem, we have another problem and that is obviously the distance of the fog in front of the camera. So if I go to somewhere like perspective now, fog is completely dependent on the camera. So if I go closer to my character, you'll notice that the fog gets a bit lighter but if i move away from it the fogs get thicker so how do we solve uh, that problem inside of our main camera how to make the fog thicker now to do that we have to change the distance value now 0 0.020 is the minimum or you can say the default value of not the minimum the default value of the fog i'm going to change this to something like maybe like a 5 and you'll see the fog move closer to the camera or your character so I'm going to make this something like maybe 80 and now you'll see we have much foggy scene. Now don't uh, worry about this terrain here because since um, this is because of the overall displacement map. So I can quickly get into my camera here. I can get rid of that and I can get a bit more zoomed in here to maybe like a 43 and I can lock it again. All right. So since we are done with this, I'm going to go to my AI fog again. This was my earlier fog and this is a right now fog all right so there we go now i'm going to simply change the overall color here to something like maybe a blade runner type of color and there you go so from here this is a completely procedural uh, effect now you can change anything that you want if the fog is a bit too thicker you can reduce it make it less dense if you want to change the height overall you can do that totally on you uh, you can take another overall primitive to see how the overall interaction is going on with the whole effect here so if uh, i go to the perspective mode and if i you know really put this sphere far far away you can see the overall perspective here and the overall effect of parallax here so you can create pretty amazing and cinematic stuff with this now let's move on to the second effect i'm going to delete this and i'm going to go to my render settings here and right click on the atmosphere and break connection now the second step is obviously creating the ai atmosphere volume now if you don't know about volume i have explained in depth about volume in my another video so do check that out if you want to learn more about it now uh, in a short notice basically air volume requires a light to work so it's basically a fog generated by a simple light so here i have a simple area light i'm gonna turn this on i'm gonna rotate this hit g on your keyboard and i think there yeah 90 degrees and scale this up to something like this now you won't see much of the stuff happening because the exposure is too low so i'm gonna make this to something like one let's keep increasing it and now there you go so i'm gonna make this to something like a 10 all right and let's move it a, a bit closer to our character all right there you go so now as you can see we have something like this pretty good looking but we don't see any atmosphere and the reason is because in our atmosphere the density value has been set to zero by default so i'm going to make this to 0.100 and now you'll notice it completely burns off the scene and that is because the exposure is a bit too much for the atmosphere so i'm going to make this to somewhere like four and now you can see we have much subtle effect so i'm going to keep increasing this until i get a bit of a subtle in between look so i'm going to keep it to eight i'm going to select my light make it a bit larger so it kind of covers the whole scene and somewhere right about there is good enough for me all right so let's bring this up so uh, and you'll notice that since we are using the ai fog and obviously the light is not visible to the camera but if it was you can see the overall horizon line here not horizon line but the volume line where the volume is being generated so you have to be very careful when you're using the ai atmospheric volume because if the light are seen in the overall scene here uh, it will be noticeable all right so something like this i'm gonna rotate this to something like so you'll see that this is our light here so it is quite no noticeable if even if i make the camera to complete zero you'll notice that it is still noticeable so always make sure that your overall area light is out of the scene and this is so i'm gonna move it out of the scene bring it quite higher and that's it so i'm gonna increase the volume amount or uh, sorry exposure amount from here and i think this is looking quite good i can bring it a little bit down actually and from here actually i'm gonna do one thing which is increasing more samples in volume just so we can get a grain free look for our volume so i'm gonna make the samples in the volume to somewhere about three and the volume samples to maybe like four 
the overall resolution will be 1000 and the samples will be somewhere around 4 that should be enough now obviously the scene looks a bit too bright right so i'm going to decrease the exposure since we have increased more samples in our volume you'll get much brighter look all right so there we go now we have a simple blade runner look all we have to do is just change the overall light here and there we go so i'm going to make this something like maybe a 10 yeah there you go all right so this looks perfect like a blade runner look so i'm gonna move on from here and actually this is a pretty cool nice effect to play around with i'm just gonna give it and uh, since using the ai atmosphere you get a kind of a functionality where you can pretty much mess around with your volume you can take another area light if you want and uh, maybe put it somewhere around here and maybe use a temperature make it blue increase the amount of exposure to something like maybe a 10 all right so now you can see we get a sepia kind of look since the two volumes are quite blending in and i'm going to make this somewhere like 11 and now you can get this kind of look as well so both has some pros and cons you cannot use the whole fog for multiple colors but you can use that with area uh, sorry atmospheric volume and some area lights uh, and the fog is quite uh, you can say in a linear way uh, you can pretty much use it in any scene if you go further backwards wherever you go the fog will be still there so both has some pros and cons it totally depends on your project what are you working for what are you working on so i think this is a quite um, amazing look and obviously do some post processing when you're done finishing the overall renders in maya do some color grading in photoshop to give a bit more interesting look to whatever you are designing so if i add another object here maybe like something like this all right so you'll notice that it still interacts pretty nicely with this right and there you go so i can move it backwards so you'll see it comes under much more foggy look since it is behind the overall area light so you can much volume is passing through in front of it so this looks uh, this looks pretty nice to me so that's it and one thing to keep in mind when you're rendering this make sure you have enough samples in your light whatever area light you're using and uh, your volume as well all right so that's it uh, if the gpu version does not work for you try switching it to cpu and use that for rendering as well apart from that you don't need transmission or subservice scattering if you are if you if your scene does have subservice scattering or transmission use it otherwise don't use it it will just add up more extra time to your renders all right that's it for this one and i'll see you in the next video